Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to my updated Hutao guide. In this video, I'm gonna be covering everything you need to know about Hutao, who is just now getting her first rerun banner. And so she's been out for a while now to where I've gotten to fully test and play with her many, many times, clearing every single new Abyss rotation with this character. And so in this video, I'm gonna give you guys everything you need to know about Hutao, how to play her optimally, get the most value from this character, and obviously show you how to build her. In this video, I'm also gonna be including a full detailed weapon ranking so that you guys can build your Hutao perfectly based on whatever you have. I also wanna give you a huge shout out before I begin to the F-97, for the math behind the weapon ranking and i also want you guys to know that i will be streaming live probably when this video goes out and i also stream most nights on twitch so link in the description if you're interested with that being said let's dive into it okay so the first thing i want to do in this video is give you guys a rundown on how to play hutao cover her talents her play style and all that stuff and we'll also get into more advanced things a bit later in the video regarding her animation canceling and her optimal combos so first of all hutao's elemental skill is a just a really good ability that is the core source of her damage what i mean by that is it will convert your normal and charge attacks to pyro damage and it also increases your attack based on your max HP. This is where Hu Tao's HP scaling comes from and why you want to build HP on Hu Tao over attack because this will increase your attack based on your max HP. Because of this, you're always going to want to do your attacks inside of your elemental skill. This is the stance that you're going to be dealing damage in. Using normal attacks or charge attacks on your Hu Tao outside of your elemental skill is usually just a bad idea. This ability has a 9 second duration with a 16 second cooldown, so it does have some downtime, although you can play around it, and I'll cover that in this video, by running Hu Tao with a good team, having good rotations and just knowing what you're doing. On top of that, when you do charge attack with Hu Tao, you're going to be dealing bonus damage through these blood blossoms that will apply a sort of mark on enemies, making them take even more damage. Inside of your elemental skill, you want to typically be spamming your charge attacks, as this does a pretty good amount of damage, usually by doing one or two hits into a charge attack, which will allow you to deal massive amounts of pyro damage very fast. One thing to keep in mind with your skill though, is that it actually does cost some HP to use. It will take away 30% of your current HP, which can seem like a downside, but is actually pretty nice and convenient, because Hu Tao typically wants to stay low HP. The reason for this is because not only will her burst deal more damage at low HP, or under 50% HP, but you also have a passive that will give you 33% pyro damage bonus when you are under half HP. This is absolutely huge and so you want to make sure that you're trying to stay like under half HP basically all the time. This isn't as hard as it seems and it is pretty easy to play around since you can pair her with a shield character like Diona or Zhongli to avoid dying and also having a shield with Hu Tao is nice because it means you spend less stamina dodging around which gives you more to spam your charge attacks if you don't have your first constellation. Also what's really nice about her elemental skill is that the fact that it costs HP can actually be very nice if you accidentally overheal. Let's say you run Hu Tao with a healer that will heal you a bit too much. You can use your skill to lower your HP back down so that you are dealing more damage. Regarding your elemental burst, this is your main source of AoE. It's just a big pyro hit all around you that will also heal you and just deal massive amounts of pyro damage. Ideally, you want to be vaporizing or melting this burst for the bonus reaction damage that it will deal, but overall this is just a pretty good burst, very versatile, and can help in AoE situations when your charge attack can't hit everyone at the same time. And you guys should also know that this ability will heal you when you use it. The one tip I want to mention right now though is not only should you use this burst at low HP, as I said, but you gotta make sure you use it inside of your elemental skill, as this skill will greatly, greatly increase your attack by a portion of your max HP. Lastly, regarding your other passive, this will just give crit rate to your off-field supports passively during your skill, so it's just a nice bonus. Regarding your talent priority, I typically recommend for the most damage to maximize your normal attacks first, then your skill, and then your burst, but all three are very important, and leveling your burst can help for like speedrunning or for just one-shotting certain enemies, but typically normal attack and then skill and then burst. Now, while I was initially planning on keeping an advanced section for Hu Tao a bit later in the video, I feel like a lot of these tips are very crucial to playing Hu Tao efficiently and things that everyone should know. The first thing I want to talk about is animation canceling with Hu Tao. Okay, so now I want to show you guys what it looks like to jump cancel or dash cancel and also talk about the advantages of it. Now keep in mind, floor 9 is not the best floor to test it in, but the abyss just reset and I want to record this section. Basically, what you need to know is that one of the big advantages of jump canceling or dash canceling is increasing your DPS and preventing you from like getting launched super far away. When you just dash attack normally, you get launched and there's also more of a longer animation than if you were to just cancel it very early on. This can be an advantage sometimes. If you want to dash through multiple enemies, let's say there's a slime here and a slime like behind over there, you can dash through both of them and hit them both. However, typically to maximize your DPS and spam your charge attacks faster, you want to be either jump canceling at C0 or dash canceling, which will be higher DPS. You can do it at C0 as well, but it will cost more stamina. So to go into more details to explain this properly, let me show you exactly how you want to animation cancel with Hu Tao. What you want to do is you can input a jump or a dash at the very start of your charge attack animation. Now, a normal Hu Tao charge attack looks something like this, right? But in fact, Hu Tao's charge attack actually comes out a lot earlier than what you might think. This is very important to realize because look, as you can see in this clip, um, where I do it properly, yeah, right here, as you can see, I jumped before the charge attack was even like visible. As soon as the animation started, boom, I jump and the charge attack still goes out 
like while I'm in the air. That's how early you can actually cancel this by, you know, jumping, dashing, whatever. And so this can increase your damage very, very highly, but it is a timing that is a bit strict or a bit weird to get used to. You can cancel it a lot faster than what you might think uh, if you haven't played this character before. Now, this is something that I can still occasionally mess up despite having played Hu Tao for so many hours. I do want to point out though that this isn't something you have to do, play Hu Tao the way you like her. Although if you're trying to be optimal, dash canceling can be very nice and also jump canceling if you are C0 like me. Now, regarding her optimal combos, I already told you that her charge attacks are amazing. With that being said, you typically want to be doing either one or two normal attacks into a charge, with two usually being the best, it saves you stamina and can do more damage, but both of them are very good and similar in damage. Now, one of the reasons why your charge attacks are so broken is because they have no internal cooldown, meaning that every charge attack your Hu Tao does will apply pyro, allowing her to spam reactions like vaporize with Sing Chu, which is therefore one of her biggest strengths, increasing her overall damage by quite a lot. All right, so now I want to talk about Hu Tao's build specifically, which is the part that you're probably waiting for. This is one that is oftentimes misunderstood. I get so many people asking me every single day on my stream how much elemental mastery you need, what the optimal stats you want are, HP versus elemental mastery, your sands, what set you should go, Crimson Witch, Shimanawas. So I want to cover all of that right now in as much detail as possible, but also without taking too much time. All right, so let's start with Hu Tao's artifact sets. There's actually a few sets that you can go on Hu Tao, a few good four pieces and two pieces, but the main two that I like and recommend are the four piece Crimson Witch of Flames for an insane amount of pyro damage, 15% on your two piece, and then your four piece will not only increase that pyro damage when you use your skill by another 7.5%, but will also increase your vaporize and melt damage by 15 and also your overload damage if you do choose to do that. Overall, this is the set I recommend the most when it comes to just general Hu Tao gameplay, pairing her with Sing Chu, procking a bunch of reactions like vaporize, melt. This can be a really, really good set for Hu Tao and oftentimes her best in slot. However, there's also the Shimanawa set that can be similar in damage and sometimes even better. The way this works is when you use your skill, if you have 15 or more energy, you'll lose it and then gain gain 50% normal or charge attack damage for 10 seconds. This is therefore a really good increase in your damage. However, there is the drawback of losing that 15 energy, which can be very annoying in your rotations. In theory, if you use this set optimally, it can be really good. And the main thing I like about it is that it comes with the emblem set. So while you're farming for emblem for your other characters, you will passively also get the reminiscence set, or vice versa, making it a very efficient domain to farm. However, when you use the set, you're typically going to be bursting once every three rotations, whereas in a normal build, a non-reminiscence build, you're going to be bursting every two rotations. On top of that, and while this doesn't mean much, I do think reminiscence is a bit harder and more annoying to play, since you have to be a lot more strict with the timing of your burst and all that. But in general, both are really good, and I tend to recommend picking whichever one has better substats for you, while recommending Crimson Witch of Flames for the sort of average player, but obviously both are amazing. Now, that being said, there are some other good two-piece sets you can run uh, to mix and match if you don't have the best witch set or reminiscence set, being two-piece wanders for AD Elemental Mastery, and even two-piece Tenacity of the Millilith for 20% HP. And while I don't recommend running Hu Tao in a purely pyro team, if you do choose to do that, four-piece Lava Walker can be good, uh, but it isn't typically my preference. Okay, now with that being said, let's talk about Hu Tao's artifact stats. The first thing I want to say is that Hu Tao typically wants Elemental Mastery when she is proccing reactions like Vaporize, which is what I recommend you do. Because of that, the first 100 Elemental Mastery you get is very very important and can be even better than crit. So it's very important for you Hu Tao to at least have a minimum of elemental mastery with a range of 100 to 200 typically being good. And after that, obviously you want to focus more on your crit rate and your crit damage. As for your energy recharge, you typically don't really want any because building damage, building crit, elemental mastery and all that is better than stacking energy recharge as it's okay if your Hu Tao can't burst every single rotation, but every two instead, since you will be dealing more damage on average. And HP percent is also a very good substat, but it's kind of like attack percent on other characters where it's good, but it's usually not as good as like crit, which does provide you with more damage. So because of that, getting your elemental mastery and your crit are the most important, with HP percent also being a good substat. Now with that being said, for the main stats you want, obviously you want a pyro damage bonus goblet and a crit rate or crit damage circlet. However, for your sands, it can depend. HP and elemental mastery are both good. The one you choose depends on two things. Number one, your substats. Obviously having good substats is very, very important, especially when it comes down to uh, Hu Tao specifically, because HP sands and elemental mastery sands are both pretty similar in damage. However, it also depends on your personal Hu Tao stats. For example, if your Hu Tao has no elemental mastery, getting that first 100 elemental mastery and just a good amount of EM is very, very important to where elemental mastery sands will be better than HP. But if you already have enough elemental mastery on your substats, then I would recommend running an HP sands. So basically both are good and it does depend on your stats. All right, so now we're gonna talk about Hu Tao's weapons and I'm gonna give you guys a full detailed weapon ranking so that you guys know the best weapon for your Hu Tao. This is gonna be separated in a few parts. We're gonna talk about our best free to play options, best four stars, and 
and then just Staff of Homa, which is the best weapon overall. And I guess that's what I should talk about. Staff of Homa is typically one of the best spears on literally every polearm user because of the pretty good base attack and the insane amount of crit damage. Like, actually, this gives more crit damage than a circlet, which will give you 62%, where Homa will give you 66. While the stats of it alone are enough to make it amazing, the effect makes it even better on Hutao because it increases your HP by 20% at refinement 1 and then also gives you an attack bonus based on your max HP. On top of that, when you're under 50% HP, you will gain even more attack based on your HP. So there's basically just a lot of things happening at once, but all you need to know is that it will just consistently buff your Hutao in so many different ways to make it clearly the best in slot for her. That being said, as someone who kind of hates weapon banners because the rates are terrible, I'm happy to say that there's actually some really good four stars and other options as well that you can run if you don't have Homa. The best ones are the Dragon's Bane and Deathmatch. Dragon's Bane is especially good if you can refine it and if you're vaporizing, since it buffs your damage against pyro or hydro affected enemies, making it really, really good when you pair her with Sing Chu. On top of that, it gives you a ton of elemental mastery, which once again is extremely good at buffing your reaction damage. Deathmatch is also an amazing option because it gives you a ton of crit rate, also some attack, and the low base attack doesn't actually matter too much for Hutao since you're mainly a character who scales off your HP, making it a really good 4 star as well. If you don't have any of those, Blackliff Pole can also be good and is technically free to play because you can get it through the Star Glitter Shop, and so it can be a good 4 star option if you don't have the other ones that I mentioned. For some other weapons, a Lithic Spear can be good, especially with stacks and refinement, and other 5 stars like the Vortex Vanquisher and Jade Wing Spear can be good, and so you can use them if you have them, but they're obviously not in the same tier as Staff of Homa. And lastly, for a free to play option, if you don't have the Blackliff Pole, it's actually pretty sad because the Blacksmith weapons are pretty bad for Hu Tao, but you can use a black or a white tassel, with the white tassel being the best, although I do recommend getting a 4 star spear if you can, like Deathmatch, Dragon's Bane, or even Blackliff Pole. For an exact weapon ranking, I'll put it on screen right now, although do keep in mind there's some assumptions here, like the exact rotation, the team comps, how you're playing your Hu Tao, this can depend on your substats, and just a lot of things, so always use this as a general idea, some weapons can go slightly higher, slightly lower, but it does kind of show you that Staff of Home is the best, but Deathmatch and Dragon's Bane are also amazing, and there's other good weapons in there as well. Now, constellation wise, I'm C0 because I enjoy suffering and running out of stamina, but while their constellations aren't needed, I really like her first constellation, and it's probably my favorite of any 5 star C1 in the game, at least for the quality of life increase that it gives. As I mentioned earlier in the video, this will make your charge attacks not cost any stamina, allowing for not only much easier, much more comfy gameplay, but also increasing your DPS potential. Since you no longer need to spend stamina charge attacking, you can dodge more between attacks, you can also dash cancel for more DPS, and it's just typically a really, really big upgrade to where it can typically be an even better investment than Staff of Homa, although that can depend on other factors that I covered in my last video, so if you want more information about that, be sure to check that out. Overall though, I want to make it clear that Hu Tao is still a good unit at C0, but she does get a pretty big power spike at C1, and also another power spike with Staff of Homa, so while you shouldn't feel forced to go for this, if you do have C1, it is a really nice upgrade, and also makes her, in my opinion, a lot more fun. For your other constellations, while a few of them are good and I'll cover them, I honestly don't recommend going past C1. Like, even if you like this character a lot, I feel like it is a much better investment to keep her C1, and then if you have spare primo gems, maybe get Staff of Homa, or save them for another banner. Basically, to give you guys a rundown, your second constellation will give you a bit more damage on your Blood Blossom, your C3 and 5 will increase your talent levels, which are obviously pretty nice, your C4 will give more crit rate to your party, to your supports, and your C6 is a huge burst increase, giving you crit rate to that burst damage, but it isn't something that I recommend, because it doesn't really increase your DPS overall, it just helps your Hu Tao deal like a huge burst damage, or make survival as like a burst support, in like speedrunning teams, or for flexing, overall though, it's not that great of a C6 for just like a main DPS, and so I either recommend keeping your Hu Tao at C0, or getting that C1, which is really good. Alright, so now I want to talk about Hu Tao's team comps, which is a very important section to understand this character and how to play her optimally, because there's a lot of things you have to know to build a proper team and deal the most amount of damage in your rotations. The first thing I want to specify is that Hu Tao teams after the first slot, like after pairing her with Sing Chu, is pretty flexible. Obviously, as I already said in this video, I highly recommend pairing her with Sing Chu. If you don't know why, he just does a ton of damage and applies Hydro insanely fast on his burst, allowing you to vaporize every single charge attack you do, and even potentially melt if you also use cryo supports, making him just like the perfect match for Hu Tao, and so I always recommend you run them together. While I know some people like running Child with Hu Tao, it isn't nearly as efficient because Child applies Hydro when he's on field, so he can't really enable your Hu Tao, whereas Sing Chu will apply it from off field very easily, making him an absolutely perfect match for Hu Tao, on top of the fact that he can heal you a little bit if you want to run a team comp that's not running a healer. Now while the other two slots are flex, one thing I want to say is that I highly recommend shields for a C0 Hu Tao. The reason for that is because at C0, Hu Tao is going to use a lot of stamina to charge attacks to where you don't really want to have to dodge every attack. And while you can manage to spam your charge attacks without running out of stamina, if you're fighting an enemy that attacks rapidly or that can one-shot you, you really want to make sure you're dodging, especially in like the current abyss, 
that can be very stamina heavy to where it's very highly recommended and can oftentimes increase your damage to just have a shield character, especially if your Hutao, as I said, does not have her first constellation, so that you can use all of your stamina offensively instead of having to dodge and dash around. Now, while obviously Zhongli is the shielder of choice in general, because he offers a very tanky shield and an amazing damage bonus with his shield, reducing the resistance of enemies, so buffing your Hu Tao and your Sing Chu, and also the fact that in this team you usually don't need a healer, because Hu Tao will heal herself with her burst, Sing Chu also heals a bit with rain swords, and you have Zhongli's shield. I do want to specify that Zhongli isn't needed, he's not the only shielder you can run if you do choose to run a shield. Obviously, a character like Diona can work too, and she does also give you quite a bit of particles and reduce your stamina consumption on your charge stacks through her passive ability. So Diona can be good, but keep in mind that if you don't want to overheal your Hu Tao, if you want to stay under 50% HP to deal the most damage, when you're pairing her with a healing character like Diona, you can either make an effort to run out of their field, or if you do overheal, it's not a big deal, you can just lower your HP back down using your elemental skill or by getting hit. I also wanted to mention Toma who just came out. I'm recording this clip later on the Asia server after just having streamed and testing Hu Tao Toma for a couple hours, so my voice is dead, I apologize. But Toma is another shielder that you can use with Hu Tao, and he does enable a special type of team comp that is actually really good for my testing. You can run Toma and Hu Tao together, allowing your Toma to apply Pyro at the start of your rotation, then you can swirl it with an Anemo character, buffing your whole team with, uh, you know, this passive, if it's Kazua, Sucrose also buffs your team uh, by giving them Elemental Mastery, and you also have access to the Verdescent Venator set, which will decrease the opponent's resistance to the Pyro that you swirl, making your damage a lot higher. This team is one of my favorites for Hu Tao, however, Toma just came out, and this is a Hu Tao guide, so while I think these characters have good synergy together because of Toma's shield, being another pyro unit, and especially allowing you to swirl that pyro by using a team like this with an Anemo character and Toma. For more information about Toma and this team, be sure to check out my next video, which will come out in a day or two where I go into more detail on Toma, although there's still a lot more testing that needs to be done, especially because, like, for example, my Sinkju is uh, C6, which can change his Hydro application. I did want to specify though that the reason why you need another Pyro to be able to swirl it is because Hu Tao can't really apply Pyro from off field, her E has a very long cooldown, you can't just apply Pyro then swap, so you want that other Pyro unit to apply it so you can swirl it to buff your damage. Now as I mentioned, the slots after Sing Chu are pretty flexible. Oftentimes, the other two characters you pair are going to have a synergy with each other. A good example is running Kaya and Diona to allow your team to not only vaporize but also melt, allow your Hu Tao to melt some attacks, some bursts, and on top of that, Kaya is just a pretty good support. Other crowd characters can work obviously. And then Diona is your shielder and will give cryo particles to your Kaya. Another really good team is this double Geo one if you do have both five stars, which does provide you a ton of utility and damage. Another team that can work, especially against heavy enemies, is actually you can use Fischl in this team or in any team um, with Hu Tao and Sing Chu, because using Fischl with Sing Chu will apply that electro charge reaction and also allow your Hu Tao to like vaporize, making it also a pretty good team, especially against heavy enemies that won't get knocked back if you do overload. Also, you can actually pair Beto with Fischl in this team, because Beto is a pretty broken unit, especially when paired with Fischl and Electro Battery, and she'll cover your sort of AoE weakness that Hu Tao can sometimes have because of her burst bouncing between enemies rapidly and dealing massive amounts of damage, especially to two or three enemies. Lastly, regarding mono pyro teams where you're pairing Hu Tao with Animo and pyro units, so like Shang Ling, Kazua, things like that, those teams can definitely work and I've seen them do a lot of damage. However, there's usually better or more optimal options than Hu Tao in those teams, like running Kazua, Shang Ling, Venti, Bennett, but Hu Tao can be viable there, it's just not my favorite team, so it's not usually what I recommend. Alright, so now I'm going to do a DPS showcase, full clearing floor 12. I'm going to be using a 4-star team, well with Hu Tao obviously, but 4-star supports, Sing Chu, Diona, Kaya, very accessible team comp. I do have a Staff of Homa, Refinement 1, with a C0 Hu Tao, so that is something to keep in mind. My charge stacks will be obviously costing stamina. I am on a 4-piece Crimson Witch of Flames with pretty good artifacts, 121 Elemental Mastery, and a good crit ratio. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed the guide, and I hope you'll enjoy the showcase. Let's go!
So yeah, I know that showcase wasn't perfect, but obviously I just did one attempt and it was pretty good overall. Hu Tao's a really good unit, especially for single target, although her burst and the way you utilize charge attacks, as well as your support characters, can help you for AoE situations. Also, Hu Tao's just a pretty cute character overall, which I think is a plus if you want to pull for her, but obviously she isn't a must-pull, especially with other powerful carries like Shang Ling being free, and because there's so many DPS characters that I recommend you pull for the ones whose playstyle you enjoy. And so I hope this video helped you guys build her properly and learn to play her optimally to get the most value out of this character. So yeah, yeah, that's about it. I hope the guide was useful. If there's anything I want to add, it will be in a pinned comment, so be sure to check that. And if you want more information with things like, you know, C1 versus Staff of Homa, be sure to check out my last video, and also be on the lookout for my complete Toma guide, which will come out probably in a day or two, once we finish testing him out, where I will also be testing Toma with Hu Tao and talking about that. And so with all that being said, I hope this video was helpful, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.